Hands me back. Two brothers, uh, come to you looking rather worried. Which event is this now? They say Kaman has been sitting with Paragon torture for hours now. The cultist has a scarred forehead and speaks of incredibly strange things. Ah, oh, right. You're going to see the two men. Paragon looks up at you, smiling, and says the cultist actually has a lot to teach him. Grimacing, you wonder if you should put a stop to these lessons. Do as you wish. More cultist brothers, the better. Yes. The Paragon has been converted to a cultist. And Coman got more resolve. And Coman's our bannerman, so the extra resolve is doubly good. You nod and turn away. The rest of the brothers shake their heads. By next morning, Paragon is found with a fresh wound on his forehead. The blood of conversion. When you ask how he's doing, he only says a few words. Darfkul is coming. Well, great. It is great. How many cultists do we actually have now? There's one. Herbert Schnickson, although he'll be replaced eventually. Verondox, that's two. Aragon, that's three. Dubspits. Uh, Coman is four. And that's it. So I seem to remember that Paragon was a wild man. Now he's a cultist, so yeah, his fatigue doesn't get reduced after that change happens, though. I love the fact that we are acquiring a number of pikes now. One, two. We'll need probably 11 in total, or 10 in total at some point. One, two, three, four, five. Evening spits and pills, you're right, mate. Good for us. Deliver a day to the northeast. Now, I just got to remember, I've got all my lads. It's just the two more archers that we're after. And then eventually, Tobert and Fulmac will be given a honorable retirement. Where are we off to? Alpstadt. Renown, we got to be close. 992, yeah. We need 1060. Ooh, we should take this out. A few thugs, few marksmen, brigand raiders. But we have a full inventory, so we need to go unload what we're carrying. I think once I've done this ambition, we will maybe push to the seven and a half thousand gold ambition so we can get more inventory space. We need the inventory space quite urgently, actually. We only have 99 inventory space. Oh, look at that. Bought for 350, selling for 600. Bought for 180, selling for 300. Bought for 99, selling for 150. We're even making profit on the food we're buying. Bows, we only need two. Crossbows, we don't need. Uh, let's see. Total amount of pole arms for fighting Alps. We need ten in total. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So two can be sold. Then I gotta think about these long axes. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with the long axes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven. See, this is why we're having so many inventory issues. It's wonderful that we have a second wind potion and all this poisoned oil. And all these throwing spears. The poison door is going to be particularly good for taking on uh, those big uh, troll things called again. Unhold. Dawnthal, fine. <laughs> Uh, 1300 I do want to keep buying more leather scale but I'm just conscious of the fact that I'm expecting the next ambition to be the seven and a half thousand gold so let's just keep saving the only thing we'll spend money on before then is if we actually find a hunter 
or a whip in the armory. You don't have to convince me as to the merits of long axes, as we saw from the previous campaign. This is bad. We're going to have to flee here. It's, it's only caravan hands, not even caravan guards. The orc young aren't too bad, but the berserkers are the issue. And it's night time, so my archers are not going to be able to do enough. I could try to fight them. I mean, we could, we could just save scum it if we uh, end up getting killed. Let's give the frontline lads the kite shields instead of round shields, so at least the shields won't just break in one hit. Damn, only one war bow at 76 accuracy to... Well, let's see how it goes. He just leave Warhammer user Aragon Torturer. Should we go quite net heavy? I think we probably should. Hmm. Is the poisoned oil going to do anything? I suppose it could technically help a little bit against the tougher orcs. Why not? I mean, little daggers aren't going to do anything. And I mean, I was technically, I suppose, hanging on to the poisoned oil. For the unholds, but we're not fighting unholds now, are we? It's gonna be a rough one. I expect that we're just gonna have to reload this and save scum it, but we can always try. I mean, it's it's a thousand gold. It's a nice little payday. There's kind of no point in even putting a shield wall up because these little dudes will run into us and smash into us and then the shield wall gets taken down. So putting up the shield wall would actually just be a waste of fatigue. Now technically you can make the argument that I should be holding onto the poison door until we've actually gotten through their armor. But I don't want to be spending action points when I'm in contact. And I'm expecting the Berserkers and the Orc Young to hit the front lines first. And they don't have that much armor. Oh! Good dodges, boys. I can do 50 to 70, or I can do 25 to 40 with extra damage, but that target is unarmored. Oh, if I can fucking hit him. Wait, Verondox, you got quick hands yet? No, you don't. See, I should have been using military cleaver against that nerd. is going to be bad. Oh wait, hang on. I think the description of the way that poison works has been changed a little bit. It used to be the next four attacks would apply poison, but now it says this character is using a weapon coated with concentrated web neck poison. The next few hit points, hits doing at least six damage to hit points will apply it. Okay, good. So if I'm applying hits that don't do at least six points of hit points, then it won't apply the poison. So let's see, body's hit for 30 damage, body hit for 30 damage. Okay, there's the poisoned. Okay, I thought for a second maybe he's immune to the poison or something.
See, if we had one more level on all of the frontline lads, these would have been going a lot better because I, I could have quick handed to the cleavers, and then on those enemies that don't have armor, we would be doing a lot more damage to them. But we're going we're to get wrecked here. We, we're too low level to take on this fight. If there's some way that maybe we can get through this without suffering too many losses, but let's just see. Tobit, if you wait, uh, then Levitzmere should destroy that Orc Young's armor. Yeah, so Onimaru has now taken five shots and he's hit one of them. Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, I mustn't do shit like that. I've ended his turn automatically. I didn't even think that he might have had Berserk. I'm stubby. Get your head out of your ass. The only potential saving grace we have here is that maybe some of these orcs will focus on the caravan hands. And that might give us some time. Like Emmanuel here needs. Oh, he's only Warhammer user. Okay, never mind. Those misses. Oh. See, this is annoying. The caravan hands just stand there like, fucking move forward, do something. Lads. And the berserkers are stacking rage now, so. Rip us. Our next target. These two are both fleeing. Let's go help down here. Okay, so that's the berserker mostly taken care of. Tobit, we need to go rotate Ration out of there. The Gungnir will rotate with him. Expect this orc berserker to die. These lads here are in so much trouble. are so boned uh, at least I just maybe we can rotate them out I really didn't want to put Ikri into melee range but we kind of had to So I just wasn't carrying. Oh, he wasn't carrying bandages. So rip Aegis. <coughs> like, yeah, no, there's no way to do this fight without losing at least one lad.
I mean, I, I didn't know, I knew when I was accepting a three days of escort mission this early on that it was super unlikely we'd be able to do it. That might be more doable, a bunch of marksmen. In fact, I could probably take those on during the day now. No, it's still a nighttime fight, okay. These nerds are coming at us. This is a very crucial part of the campaign. We've got a bunch of lads at around level 6 or level 7. Uh, less items for sale, buying for more, selling for less. What can we sell? I feel like I need all this stuff. Keep grinding, boys. We're nearly there. Nearly there. But like I was saying, it's a crucial time for us now. If we lose any of these lads, it's so disappointing because losing guys at any point is obviously disappointing. But when you lose them when they are level 7 and above, that's doubly disappointing. Resolve, fatigue, and melee defense. Uh, I've really got a Bannerman. No, we only need archers. And I don't want to hire him as the bannerman and then start our banner guy at level one again. That wouldn't be any good. No, why do we keep the poison door? I mean, I can only... Maybe, maybe we only equip the daggers if we specifically see an enemy with armor that we know we're going to want, which is usually a brigand leader or a hedge knight or some such. Hint of murmuring grows louder. So these guy, one, two, who is it? All right, fine. So 30 ammunition for some range skill. Excellent. The fact that the Warhammer gets the range skill, fortunately, is a waste. Oh, lots of thugs. This is going to be a slaughter. Sorry, doggos. Sorry. Oh, the old one shot. Yeah, the bleh. <laughs> it is a sorry sound. I mean, kind of as we expected, these military picks are situationally incredible. Like, even against those orc warriors, I mean, they have tier two weapons, but you saw how we were shredding, like, even with a normal attack, about a quarter of that orc warrior's armor. And if you use the second skill, the destroy armor, it's like a third or a half. Seventy-three percent chance for quick shot. Eighty-seven for th throwing. Hence the strength of throwing weapons. And don't forget, these are our, you know, shite archers. These are the guys who don't have the kind of stats I would want on an archer. And then just to wrap up my thought on how it would be super disappointing to lose lads now. These Warhammer guys have a very late game damage curve. 
Whereas the torturers have a more mid-game damage curve because it's easier to get them the weapons they need and they don't need all those level 11 perks to be able to do what they need to do. Whereas the two-handed Warhammer lads do kind of need to be level 11. So surviving in this world without a shield is quite tricky. these thugs were thinking about standing and fighting. <clears throat> uh, also, another nice thing about the hammers is I think some of the best uh, injuries you can inflict are the blunt weapon uh, injuries. I think that the piercing weapon injuries are the least, least debilitating. I mean, the single worst injury you can inflict is... Is it, is it severe concussion or fractured skull? I think it does the same thing. Minus 50% to all stats. You hit with that, you are fucking donezo. Okay, I'm just opening up my build document. Let's see. Uh, Raider Lad, level 9, Berserk. Uh, Warhammer Raider Lad. Just want to make sure I've got all the right ones. Student, Gifted. Rotation, recover, weapon spec, nimble. Uh, here it says at level 8 Colossus, but we took Underdog instead. Yeah, you actually absolutely have to have Underdog. I think I should switch out level 11 for Underdog. Dog at level 8. Zerk at nine. Reach advantage, indomitable Mighty killing frenzy. Good tonight. Will you come with me to Camelot? Comatose Badger, thanks for the sub, my man. Welcome to Camelot. Greetings. Tis a silly place. Is it time to go for? You might as well go for Berserk. Reach advantage at ten. Well, actually, we're going I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll rather go. We'll, we'll, we'll go killing frenzy at ten, and at eleven we'll take. Uh, killing frenzy and then at 11 we'll take indomitable and reach advantage this reach advantage only works with a two-handed weapon and i like to have indomitable uh before i start using the two-handed weapons it's a very defensive very conservative approach but with your two-handed weapon lads i think you have to be they can be very very fragile it's only a model uh, so we said Berserk at 9. Yes. And just to remind you lads, if you're interested in seeing this document, go to the Discord. Uh, under the Stobby's BB builds, I've pinned this Word document. And there's all the builds for the tank, uh, shield breaker lad, raider lad, which is the two-handed weapon user, dagger specialist, one-handed specialist, uh, archer. This is a build for... I need to rework because I think this this is the hybrid archer. And then ninja being the specialist throwing weapon. But I'm so impressed with the way that the hybrid archer build works that I don't see myself ever really using a pure a pure archer or a pure ninja again. Unless I'm playing something like peasant militia where I have the extra bodies to work with. I just find it so useful to be able to start the engagement with the war bow, pick off the enemy archers and then when you are attacking enemies with armor you can then uh, can then use your throwing weapons now the torture at level nine now this i gotta think about a little bit because i think it's time for quick hands we've already got nimble we've got berserk so for the torturer quick hands is mandatory Recover is mandatory, that's at level 9 and 10. And then at 11 we got two more perks. I think we'll take Killing Frenzy. And one other perk. We don't need Underdog, we are in the center of the formation. Fearsome is kind of redundant. Indomitable? Mm. 
I don't know. Um, we could go Colossus. Oh no, Shield Expert, of course. Shield Expert. I really like Shield Expert because it increases your knockback chance and it means you take less damage to your shield. So later on, when you get legendary shields, they're less likely to get destroyed. It's so disappointing and so frustrating when you have a legendary shield and an orc warrior just walks up and smashes through it. Right, so at nine, we'll take quick hands. Or will we? Will we take. I think we'll take recover actually at nine. Recover at nine. Quick hands at 10, and at 11 we'll take Killing Frenzy, and I need to rework this build. I need to get Shield Expert earlier. Shield Expert earlier would have been amazing for him, because if you have like a valuable brother, who you know you're going to take Shield Expert on anyway, I think take Shield Expert as soon as you can, and spring to buy him uh, a Heater Shield. Because the Heater Shield is less likely to get destroyed, and he'll benefit from the extra melee defense. Uh, recover. Oh, yes, these plus threes. Oh, baby. Right, so recover at nine, quick hands at ten, getting frenzy at eleven, and shield expert at eleven. That means I'm going to have to skip out on Colossus. I think for my Bannerman, it's got to be nimble. Later on, we'll take quick hands and have him use a crossbow as well, but of course, nimble. Level 7 is such an important level. Uh, honestly, his melee skill can be taken to 70 and left there. I love that he's tough. That is great and great. The 75 hit points plus nimble should be enough for a Bannerman. He's unlikely to ever really need to rotate one of these middle three lads out of a, out of a, out of trouble. <laughs> We're close, lads. We're close. We're close to getting our Warhammer boys. Now, I keep saying Warhammer, but in my mind, when I think Warhammer, I think two-handed Warhammer. But this is called a Warhammer. Maybe I should start referring to the two-handed variant as a battle hammer, just so I can differentiate. Because I don't like saying two-handed Warhammer. <laughs> Lads. I could theory craft forever. I could sit and chat about intricacies of Battle Brothers. 7 said it before, I'll say it again. This game is truly, truly special. Ah, that Gungnir is the name of Odin's spear. In, I thought that the, the word Gungnir sounded familiar. Five, six, seven, eight, two, and then Fenrir was the wolf. Oh yes, and then Odin, in the myth, he pulled, he plucked out his own. No, we, no, it was Tyr, Tyr who cut off his hand, in a in a bargain with Fenrir to bring Fenrir under his control. I seem to remember. Why did Odin pluck out his eye? It was for the gift of the far sight, I seem to remember. It's been a while since I've brushed up on my Norse mythology. I like that story, he traded his eye for wisdom, because I would make the argument that if you were wise to begin with, you wouldn't pluck your fucking eye out. Like some sort of nerd. Right, what do you need? Follow the tracks, return the lockbox. Keep giving me money. <laughs> he had a spare, huh? True. Let's just take a second to think about when are we going to start changing our tactics against marksmen. We'll be able to change the marksman tactics once my two archers have bullseye. And they're going to need like 85 range. I mean, now we'll be, we'll have like a 20% chance to hit those marksmen. Even with Bullseye. And then it becomes a long drawn out trade. If 
for the moment we're still far better off fighting them at night i tell you what there's only two or three of them let's see how we can potentially outshoot these marksmen now even without bullseye i suspect that we can have a very hard time Even with the kite shields. Oh, fucking crossbows never miss, do they? Go ahead, Kermitos. What is your question? Okay, we've got two choices here. We can either try to pick off the nerds in front or try to hit the obscured archers, which is obviously quite hard. Let's try. I think whenever you can find an angle on an archer. So we're, look at that, that's gone from a 13% obscured shot to a 40% unobscured shot. I think we are better off charging at these nerds. One, two, three, four. Quick hands, yes, absolutely. I think it's absolutely needed. I think it's needed because you are going to be switching between your war bow and your throwing axes and then once remember he's going to have bags and belts as well for four stacks of throwing axes and when you start procking berserk you'll be throwing three axes in a turn then you need to be switching out between your stack your bundles of throwing axes pretty much every turn i can see how you can make an argument for not taking quick hands because that gives you something else like crippling strikes or executioner or something like that. Wait, hang on. Uh, Lord Chrome has just died. Twitch has been a little unreliable the last few days. I've been getting spikes. So if you're watching the VOD or watching live and there's connection issues, just uh, you can catch the VOD uploaded to you to YouTube probably the next day normally. Now, I cannot tell us I missed that last message or two. Twitch was just throwing a temper tantrum. Right, okay. I can't get an angle on any of these nerds. We'll go there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I think, I'm not certain, but I think that because I've closed into range, melee range here, with that throwing spear, he now can't throw it. We'll find out. Also doubly glad I gave all the lads kite shields. Because they... Because the, uh, they won't be destroyed in a single throw from the throwing axe. Well, it depends on a lot of things, how long the battle is and whatnot. But... You'll, you'll, if you keep watching, you will see... Oh, fuck, I missed an unobscured shot there. That was silly. You'll see, once the archers get to the higher levels and once they start procking Berserk, you're going to be switching between bundles pretty much every turn or every second turn. So it's an interesting little bit of mathematics consideration in terms of maximizing damage do you maximize damage with a spear like uh, with a spear with a skill like executioner because that's going to give you you know x amount of of damage increase but that usually will come at the expense of taking quick hands i should take both but then you gotta compromise somewhere else it, it, it really is the, the, the eternal debate with, with Battle Brothers when it comes to uh, perk picking. W what, what the perk that you want does for you is always only half the discussion. The other half is, well, what are you giving up? Yeah, so the way I look at it is, assuming your guy is going to be proccing berserk every turn which i assure you with a, a fully leveled brother he is going to be procking berserk pretty much every turn because you get the extra accuracy with your throwing weapons so without quick hands you'll have to sacrifice four ap every second turn and that's one throw every second turn so in in that respect then you kind of offsetting the damage benefit from berserk 
this berserk's giving you the extra attack but you can't take that extra attack every second turn because you haven't got quick hands shit's complicated this fight went okay but we still saw how these marksmen even with these kite shields marksmen that that they, they fucking don't miss Good dodge, doggo. Absolutely comatose. And as I've said, you know, my regular viewers will be sick to the to the death of hearing this, but there's no objectively right or wrong answers when it comes to, to, to perk leveling. As long as you play in a method that maximizes the perks that you've chosen to go for. Good example is one of my viewers is very big casual uh, decapitation level full mech. He likes to take Executioner on almost every single one of his brothers. And I think that some of the time, that's incredibly good and it's worth doing. It's upping your damage quite a lot. And you can take it by turn, by like level two. So like within the first week of your campaign, you're getting a pretty much most of the time guaranteed 25% damage bonus, which is huge. But of course the downside is it does nothing for like a third of the enemies you're gonna fight in the whole campaign, which is undead. I mean, it's funny, when I started playing Battle Brothers, I was a lot more in favor of uh, extreme builds or like, you know, I, I, was, I was less keen on Jack of All Trades hybrid builds, but now the more I'm playing, the more I'm liking hybrid builds. I've actually, th this, th this morning, thanks to the follow carrier, this morning I've, I've just st started a new peasant militia because I wanted to test my theory of a sort of like a Roman army inspired uh, or like a hoplite inspired tactic where you got a bunch of lads and all of them especially the frontline lads are absolutely identical so in, unlike in this playthrough where we've got warhammer users and torturers on the front line and this other like hoplite type build or professional soldier type build every single brother on the front line is absolutely identical and they all have shield specialization and quick hands hammer mastery and cleaver mastery the theory being that the single best weapon for an armored target is a warhammer and the one of the best weapons for an unarmored target is a cleaver in terms of the numbers it's a sword but i like the cleaver because of the bleed effect and the execute and then the idea is every single one of your brothers on the front line they can f they can quick they can freely sw uh, quick hands between warhammers and cleavers depending on what they're attacking and early experimentation with it as early as level six they are really 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 good the rather obvious downside is that we're going to struggle when it comes to masses of enemies like zombies because we don't have the AOE, big swinging attacks. But arguably that's a little bit offset by everybody having an access to a cleaver where you can where you can just decapitate every single zombie. The other thing that I've liked, uh, that type of build has been a lot more forgiving in the early game as opposed to this type of build. Like with my Warhammer lads, I'm building them towards being amazing with two-handed weapons. So, yeah, they're a bit weak now. And the fact that with that other build, you give every single one of your brothers in the front line, they all have shield expert. And I've been a bit more particular with them, making sure they all have decent defensive numbers. So it makes your front line just damn near impregnable. But uh, I just, I, I love my two-handed weapons way too much. They are fucking great. Okay, so... Mm, let me make sure I level up properly here. Raider. Raider lad. Student, yes. Gifted, yes. Rotation, yes. Recover, yes. Weapon spec, yes. Nimble at seven, yes. Uh, underdog at eight. Berserk at nine. Killing Frenzy at ten. Indom and Reach at eleven. Now, I've taken Colossus already. So I have to compromise on one of these one of these skills. Hmm.
with the way we're going to use the warhammer lads we're going to have an outside flank a guy a space and an inside flank warhammer maybe for the inside flank warhammer users we can skip underdog because they will never have more than one two three arguably four guys around them whereas the guys on the outside flank and like if this guy gets multiple surrounded he's got lots of support around him and can be rotated out it's, it's, it's not ideal but I mean if I look at my build here for a raider I have to compromise on one of these perks hmm that's actually a very very interesting point underdog being better than reach advantage even with an AOE weapon but the thing is though a a warhammer is a little bit more complicated than that because the warhammer if it hits an enemy it staggers them which puts them to the end of the event queue so after the first round when the enemy usually gets to attack first but you should have indom up you then hit them and you ply the stagger so you get to attack them before the next turn before they do on turn two so you will usually if not always be able to get your reach advantage stacks up before the enemy gets to act on the second turn mm. Mm. yeah if let's say you are surrounded by three orc warriors and they all have shields up if you take an aoe swing and all three bounce off the shields you are fucked because then you don't get any stacks of reach advantage so I'm going to agree with Comatose Badger. And uh, this is not ideal. I wish I hadn't taken Colossus, but if it's a hard decision between Overwhelm and Underdog, I think Underdog's better. So the Defense Malice, due to being surrounded by opponents, no longer applies to this character. Remember, if you surround it, it's plus five to hit for every person surrounding. Backstabber takes it up to ten. So if you got three, if you're in contact with three enemies, they're each getting well. The one in the middle is getting plus ten. Uh, enough talk. Let's take underdog. Okay, so for Emmanuel the Third, we're going to skip reach advantage. So at ten, we will take. Probably Berserk, and at 11 we will take Indom and Killing Frenzy. I, I missed the days of quick hands applying to shields. It made, the, it made two handed weapon users so much easier. Level 7, nice. Oh no, I did it again! Oh! <laughs> oh, I gave Nimble to a heavy armor wearer. Fuck's sake. Uh, day 139. How many days of playtime are we going to lose? And um, we have to do that fight again. Fuck's sake. Uh, Stubby, you absolute tit. Interesting formation. Just so typical of me that I'll spend five minutes talking about how and level up, and then on the other lad, I'll just rush and fuck it up and not s select the correct perk. <sighs> Literally the worst. It's unusual for me to charge forward like this, but could be fine. Actually, it's Emmanuel the Third. Do you have a dog on you by any chance? You do. Okay. So then, rather than going here, if you run around, we can maybe get a dog to nibble that marksman's bum a bit. Look at that. I know it's only. 55 armor, but the old one shot of the armor. Oh. 
Okay, so that answers our question. I'm pretty sure that if you're in melee contact, you can't throw the throwing spear. I think that that raider, if he could have thrown that spear, the AI, I'm pretty sure would have thrown it. The howl off with the head. Look at that, hit two guys, totally ruin their armor. I would agree, with something like a war size, you... Because yeah, you're on the back line, so you're less likely to actually be in melee contact. Like, maybe you, with a great sword, you could take the... You can make the argument for taking um, reach advantage, because you got the plus, ch plus to hit chance. So you, you're far more likely to get those... those stacks. It does occur to me that maybe with a Warhammer and the Stagger effect it would be worth considering taking uh, Overwhelm because as I said earlier you would from turn 2 after you apply the Stagger you should be reliably be acting before your opponent so you can get that extra extra debuff from Overwhelm but I find with the two-handed Warhammer you're doing so much damage that I mean there's very little in the game that can take a two-handed Warhammer hit and still be fighting like a, lo a lot of a lot of enemies that you hit their fight is over as soon as they take that first warhammer shot and so at that point then the overwhelm stack is you know doesn't really matter that much you'd be better off with the damage increasing stat overwhelm i think is more for like a dagger specialist who's going to attack three times or a swordsman with very very high initiative I think there was a brief time when a three-headed flail would apply three stacks of overwhelm per swing. But that obviously got nerfed right quick. experiment with the two-handed flail and using reach advantage and that type of stuff but i did find that okay it's great if you're totally surrounded you get max usage out of swinging your flail but then you're totally surrounded so you're in such a shit position uh, heavy warhammer user brawny battle forged oh Uh, torturer level 7 that will be nimble fatigue is good man it's really not bad Although I do need to put some points into range defense for this lad once he takes his position on the front line whenever there are enemy archers he'll just get targeted every single time Two sixty-five compared to two fifty-seven. Yeah, so these little nasal helmets should pretty good. Added kettle two forty-eight, two fifty-three. Hmm. Indeed, like I've, I have experimented with overwhelm archers, and I haven't found it to be worth the perk point. Usually, because my archers are overwhelming a enemy archer that. If you level properly, well, on a pure archer, you can normally two-shot most archers. First shot applies a wound, the second one procs execution and kills them, but my hybrid guys don't have that. Long story short, I just find that whatever I'm shooting at, I'm killing fast enough that the overwhelm didn't feel useful. And if I want to debuff someone, I'll rather just strip their weapon away with one of my torturers. Who needs the... Got nimble yet? You do. 250, 255. 60. So then who should actually be using the padded kettle? These reserve boys, probably. I actually don't need these basic mail shirts. I can get rid of these. Get rid of all these helmets, too. 
What's up, FS? Campaign's going alright. We had to do a quick little safe scum reload because I gave Nimble to one of my heavy armor wearers. I can imagine, like, on, 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 on the, the, the bigger and scarier the enemy, overwhelm is, is better because it's a single target, you know, like the Kraken or... But then it's the argument of it, it's incredible in that situation, but it's less effective in all the other situations you're in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't think I need ten wooden shields. Seven will do. Five, six, seven. Look at that, 2,600 for a warbow. I'm going to take that. <laughs> oh my god. So once we finally, one day, get our hands on another hunter, there's going to be a warbow waiting for him. 3,000 for a heavy crossbow. I can still scarcely believe I'm buying warbows for less than 3,000, let alone 2,600. Okay, wait, this is pretty big. So Paragon now should be taking his position on the front line. And either Fulmac or Tobit Schnixen can enjoy retirement. Here's the issue, 23 range of defense, even with a cart shield. We shall have to deal with that at some point. Modern, have you got orcs this time, I think? Orcs are bloody great, aren't they? Right, so who is next for leveling? 13 and 4, well, well, we'll level up MK if we can. He's only level 1. <laughs> Full crumping. Have you, have you bought a goblin? I quite like the goblin, just so that you have that, that option. The one turn touchdown if you, if you need to try to go for it. So actually, I've got my torturers, all three torturers in the front line now. For the moment, I'm going to go hammer, cleaver, hammer, cleaver, hammer, cleaver. Until we get level 11 and all the hammer lads, then it'll be the more spread out formation. Full black orcs, troll, blitzers, one lineman, and a thrower. Oh, you must be light on rerolls then. Because the last orc team I made was... Full black orcs, full blitzers, one thrower, the rest linemen. I think with my build I had the extra reroll. Do need to play some Blood Bowl and practice with my elves, but I'm enjoying Blood Bowl. Ugh, a Battle Brothers so much. So, Dornthal so far has Hunter's Cabins, but I wonder if, are there Hunter's Cabins anywhere else on the map? Or Smelters. Gatherer's Hut. Hunter's Cabins are usually near the forested cities. Lumber Camp, so we could maybe pick up a Fletcher there. I think, okay, Hunter's Cabin, so all the way to Donnerstad. It's a bit annoying that the only two Hunter's Cabins are on the opposite ends of the map.
Oh yeah, absolutely comatose. Look at this comatose badger. It's day 140, and we are only at 988 renown. So in the nightmares. Okay, so this will be another alp fight. I don't know if I want to take another alp fight. They're such a drag. I've got plenty of parched skin. It's not worth the time and the money. Those missions are such a bummer. Oh, another Sada helmet for cheap too. Well, this particular group, I think we'll be fine for AoE because we're going to have four lads with um, with two-handed warhammers. So we're going to have four guys swinging in big circles. Should I go with finding suitable contracts? No, not really. There's plenty to do. 50. Eight. Small incremental increase there. But how can you be level 7 and not have Nimble? Oh, uh, you'll get it at, at 8. I mean, the the slower rate of gaining Renown is frustrating. But uh, once you're over it, it's a non-factor, so... Right, so, Tobich Nixon. You have been with us for how long? 122 days. You've been with us almost since the beginning. You've been an incredibly good tank, uh, but you've gotten us to where we need to get. We are set up. We've got some high-level lads. You've got 36 kills from 50 battles, and your most powerful opponent you vanquished was Withold the Brigand. Thank you for your service, my friend. Retire with honor. Very few of the, of the viewers get to have a character who actually ends up living to being able to be retired. Well, it says hunt down with terrorizers. Uh, depend from raiding parties. <sighs> depend from raiding parties. Yep, I meant to say that. No, wrong button. I meant to say dismiss, not hire. Get out of here. The GS hit the second row. What's GS? A great sword, oh yeah. While traveling the land, Verondox gets struck by bird shot. Someone bring down that plumed transgressor. Be good. Oh shot. Brigands are in sight. Well Ooh, Red Viper. Is that going to be a Mm, master Archer. Shit. Level ones and twos. He's a champion. I just hope he's not a ranged champion. I prefer to fight this at night, but I don't think we're going to get that. Yeah, that'll be like a sword master or something. We need nets and plenty of them. Okay, I should make sure I have a few daggers here because if there is a champion there, we may well want to do some daggering to get some armor. I 
So I think we'll leave the poisoned oil behind. Except for Verondox, he needs the AoE. Don't say shit like that. Hopefully none of us will become food for the worms first. God, we're just one level away from getting bullseye. Uh, one, two, three, four nets ought to be plenty. So he's got a legendary shield and some pretty average armor. It's kind of meh, honestly. This brigand marksman is going to be damn near impossible to kill behind that bush. But that's actually not going to matter because we're just going to run in now at them into melee range. It's very unlikely for him to have a legendary weapon if he already has a legendary sword. I'd be thrilled if he did. But frankly, I don't see that happening. I do need to think about, am I going to dagger this guy down? I think it's too dangerous. Let's just shut up, kill him. I mean, that is nice little helmet and armor, but... Make no mistake, this lad is dangerous. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, five. Thank goodness the only marksman only has a little uh, level one, level one uh, crossbow. Oh, awesome. That's exactly the weapon I was hoping he would have. Ow! <laughs> Emmanuel the third already is down to zero body armor. That nerd netted, boys. Nice! The headshot. And you all just keep your shield up. Just chill. The thrower. I called him Kehata. <laughs> Perfect. feeling the lack of shield breaking but that should be kind of a, a temporary thing once everybody is level 11 and has high melee attack skill shouldn't be that bad see like now with Gungnir attacking with this pick look at how little hit point damage it does So scary. I'm gonna be gutted if we don't get the Warhammer. Uh, well, legendary shield, awesome. But I really wanted that Warhammer. Remember, we're gonna need four of those. And they are feckin' expensive to buy. It's an offline one. It's an offline one. 
It might make an appearance in one of my guides, though. <laughs> I'm still not convinced about how good it is. I, 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 I'm, I'm only 100 and, 102 days in. And the average level of the front line is like level 7. I need to get them fully leveled up before I'm even convinced of if it's, you know, any good. Um, I'll, I'll definitely include it at some point. I'll make some content out of it. I love how like I'm I'm coming up on seventeen hundred hours, and, and there's still this feeling I've got. There's so much more that I can do. So much more that I can change. Urban Goodman's Wall. So twenty five range. Oh, nice. Only minus eleven fatigue. That's really good. A large card shield covered in drawings. Extraordinary craftsmanship went into making this piece. So the melee and range defense stats are pretty standard. Although I think most card shields only give plus 17 melee defense, so that's damn nice. And we know that, not Verondox, Paragon really struggles with his ranged defense, so we'll give it to him. Sweet. Our first legendary. And there was much rejoicing. Yay! Yay! Got our first legendary. May there be many more. Daniel the third. He we said for him we were gonna take under no, we were gonna take underdog over reach advantage. Let me just check all of my Warhammer lads. So Gungnir. As underdog, he'll be an outside flank Warhammer user. Then there's Lavitzmere. He's the heavy armor. I definitely want him on the outside flank with underdog. Then there is Aegis, who's still quite low level. Where's the other Warhammer lad? Full back. Who's number one? Manuel is one. Gangnir is two. And then six, seven is Levitzmere, so where's six? Six is Aegis. Okay, right, so Aegis and Levit. Right. Getting confused. Manual underdog. So his melee defense numbers are actually pretty encouraging. 25 at level 9. Not bad. Not great, but it's not bad. Well fought, boys. Very well fought. Uh, not on purpose, no. Aegis is, for the moment... Oh yeah, remember he started off by throwing nets. He'll go back to using his pike. Once he hits level 7, he'll come to the front line. And then I can level up both my polearm users and maybe even the other two reserves. We've got a Warhammer reserve and we've got a Torture reserve. It's a little unfortunate because our Warhammer reserve has higher potential than any of the other Warhammer lads. 258 for 23. Yes, that's really good. Um, if you're interested in 029, do this little exercise which I've done before is make a little list of all the various armors and then just for each of them divide their armor value by their fatigue and that'll give you the armor to fatigue ratio and then you can look through the various armors and find the very best ratios. I think for heavy armor the two best armor to weight ratios is scale mail. Lamellar harness is pretty bad, actually. Uh, scale mail and the padded harness that we just had on that champion. Those are pretty good. And then on the light armors, leather scale and, of course, noble mail are two of the best. Basic mail actually has a very, very good um, uh, armor to fatigue ratio. Yeah, anything above 10 is really good.
He's really close, Aegis is, to going to the front line. And then probably, like, Emmanuel the third will take up that outside flank position. We are very, very, very close. Having this whole, uh, whole group of, of lads changing their tactics. I just, I can't wait to start using the two-handed Warhammers. Seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, don't need that. Any of this stuff. Fifteen chosen. Wow, holy shit. I should start upgrading upgrading all these war forks for speedum if I can. Four, five, six, seven. What am I holding onto the noble sword for? When am I ever gonna really use it? All of my lads on the front line have weapon specialization. That isn't sword mastery. I can sell it. The fighting axes axes we will stockpile because we'll need them for fighting Shrat. Where my torturers? Uh, hammer, hammer, torturous three. Look, I've got three military cleavers. Awesome. And Puminus Tristus has a cleaver, so we don't have to keep stockpiling cleavers anymore. Script of Joel Fargo. There it is. Okay, so we are going to keep hitting Dawnfell at least once a week. That's doable. If my lads didn't have their armor ruined, that would be very doable. Yes, yes. You cannot do better than a Warhammer for armor destruction. The theory is, for my front seven, four of them are going to use Warhammers and the other three will use Cleavers. The Warhammer lads will ruin the armor and then, and then the Cleaver lads will disarm as necessary and uh, tidy up the unarmored remnants. Actually, I only have to keep one more basic set of mail around. And there's an outside chance with a shepherd that you might get someone who's a decent enough ranged fighter, but pretty rare. And we're still on the shopping list. I think, how many more whips do we need? One, two, three. Actually, the fact that I have whips counts towards my range weapon, uh, uh, sorry, two square weapon count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I can actually sell three of these war forks. Four of the war forks. One, two, three, four. They're pretty much so comatose, but the thing is, like, whenever I've used a two-handed warhammer, and especially if it's a legendary two-handed warhammer, I've never felt like I've been lacking for damage. Holy shit, 180 for 8 fatigue. That is amazing. Wait, hang on. This is an Alp fight, so... Probably going to be a, a touch boring, but it's to be done. Right. Ah, Vavolf is the only one who doesn't have a two two tile range weapon. 
49 accuracy, 56, 58. Give MK a battle. Right, so with this setup, we should be pretty good against Alp. Everyone can attack over range. What's the renown sitting at? We must be very close. We've exactly hit a thousand. It's taken us 142 days to get a thousand renown. Come at me, Alp nerds. Lads, what is this? Interesting, you can't apply bleed to these nerds, can you? They seem to be immune. I think they count as undead. Nice damage. Alpa, I've never seen that before. <laughs> That's new. And the Noxing's back, yeah. So the thing is, um, you know, so we were talking about the build where the brothers switch between uh, the best armor destroying weapon, a hammer, and the best hit point destroying weapon, a cleaver. But. You could very well make an argument for just using axes on everybody. Because of all of the weapons, I think that the axe probably has the best middle ground between armor destruction and base damage numbers. And you get the utility of being able to break shields. But I don't need much convincing uh, of the utility and you know, greatness of, of axes. <laughs> and love axes. So, Kamatos Badger, um, are you familiar with... So this is technically Season 23 for me. Have you seen Season 22, my 13th Legion playthrough? So if you want to know why I'm such a big, big fan of Warhammers, just go check one of the later... Uh, later episodes of the 13th Legion on YouTube and you'll check I got I got my hands on a legendary two-handed Warhammer which with its normal attack the, the single target attack on the Warhammer so you saw that hammer it did what like 300 hit uh, armor damage with a single hit it was bonkers But again, in our discussion of preferring hammers over axes, uh, neither of us is right. It's, it's, it's right for you if you choose to play that way. The hammers are right for me. And the absolute beauty of Battle Brothers is at some point, I also want to try, uh, similar to the Roman-themed military lads, everyone's the same, just instead of warhammers and cleavers, I'm just going to do straight axes on everybody on the front line. Uh, whoopsie, had another attack there. And am I the only person who thinks that if you take axe specialization, you should be able to get the fatigue reduction from using throwing axes? Because yes, it's a throwing weapon, but it's technically an axe. But I understand why they won't do that, though, because then, you know... X mastery on everybody would be would be so good because then you'd have a, a ranged weapon choice and amazing melee weapon choices. 
Oh yeah, Split Man is amazing. I have fond memories of an earlier campaign where I had an iron lunged brother and I was able to give him a orc man splitter. That was so much fun. The amount of times you just shot up one shot enemies was amazing. The orc chain as well is fucking great if you have someone with iron lungs. Oh, running away, <laughs> eh? Brock, get him! Oh, yeah. wow, you've been watching for that long. That's Thanks, Kermit. That's nice to know. Lost Vikings. I, I have a... F well, the thing is, I was almost going to say for the Legends playthrough, I might resurrect them, but they would kind of be not be utilizing all the good stuff of the Legends mod. The Legends mod is going to be all about experimenting with the new weapon types. Good boy, Brock. Who's a good dog? You're a good dog. I fought boys. That was good. Your kite shield. Warhammer. Ham torturer. So, what does he have? A pick. Who was it that's got? It is Paragon. Have we misplaced a catch? Oh, there it is. Oh, I love the fact that his resolve is, is perfect from level one. Excellent. I think this little gambler might surprise us. He's going to be a decent polearm user. My prediction. Aegis is so close. Full Mac. So grateful for your service, but you will almost be getting put out to pasture soon. Keep checking here, hoping I'm going to see another whip. Wait, do we have an unarmored dog? I seem to remember I've got an, one unarmored dog here somewhere. Nope. Yeah, with, 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 with the peasants, you are so hard pressed to get decent lads. I typically end up using a monk or flagellant, but my preferred uh, lad with the peasants uh, for sergeant or bannerman is is monk the the monks have such terrible terrible combat stats but their resolve is usually pretty good and the events that they give you uh, shouldn't be underestimated the, the events can be super useful We start stripping all the paint away, uh, getting some uniformity, or we'll start painting all the helmets red. Oh, that, that is super unlucky, actually, getting um, getting ranged skill on a on a on a monk. What a waste! I mean, technically, you could turn him into like a nice hybrid that uses a crossbow and a pole arm or something. But that, that sounds to me like a super fragile brother. We had exactly a thousand. We got 16 renown for that. We need to do like three or four missions. And uh, we should have the result uh, uh, renown that we need. Deliver to two days to somewhere else. And this is... Escort four days to the north. Take the delivery. 
Wow, 118 with no stars. That's awesome. And then plus 10 for the sash and plus 25 for strong mind. So 140. Then if that brother drinks the Lionheart potion with another plus 40, that's 180 resolve. <clears throat> I think this is doable if we take it, take that fight on at night. As long as everybody up front is at least level 7. Okay, we're taking on that fight. Decrease level 7, level 6 for Aegis, level 7 there. But this is going to be another fight where I want loads of throwing nets. If me dagger fucking noob. True, Kamatos. I worry about Paragon though, only 23 range defense. And then again, range defense is actually pretty low. One thing I actually want to do with some uh, playthrough, probably this one, I want to get every single brother on the front line should have exactly the same range defense number. Whatever the number is, it must all just be exactly the same. And then if you can give all of them exactly the same hit points and exactly the same armor, then they should all have identical EHP which should then make it hard for the AI to pick a range target because I think what it normally does is it, it just identifies the brother on the front line with the lowest EHP and all the ranged fighters just shoot at him. Right, it's hour and a half. 